I think Krauser is the most compelling villain in the Resident Evil 4 remake. His story has changed significantly in the remake. Back in the original release of the game, he was an agent of Wesker, a longtime villain of the Resident Evil series who played at least some part in almost every major event across the whole franchise. In the original release of Resident Evil 4, Wesker sent Krauser to infiltrate the Illuminatus cult as a spy and steal a sample of the Plagueis Parasite. In this way, Krauser was little more than a minion of Wesker. His purpose in the story was to represent Present Wesker's menacing, all-encompassing influence in this world. Through Krauser, Wesker played a key role in influencing the events of Resident Evil 4 without actually getting involved himself. In the remake, Krauser's connection to Wesker has been severed, and I think this was a really smart decision by the writers. Without Wesker's stifling hand, Krauser's character has way more room to breathe in this new version of the story. Instead of just doing what Wesker tells him to, he can have his own motivations, his own independent role in the story. Krauser is a dark reflection of Leon. This is a common villain archetype in adventure and action stories. The hero has to face off against an enemy who shares their abilities and experiences. From a gameplay perspective, this is always really fun, because you have to overcome an enemy who can do a lot of the same things as you. But story-wise, this is also always really interesting because it essentially forces the hero to face off against themselves. The hero has to confront a villain who shares their own abilities and experiences, hence the term a dark reflection. A dark reflection is a character who has had similar experiences to our hero, but in response to those experiences, the dark reflection made different choices. In this way, our hero confronts an alternate version of themselves, a version of themselves that followed a different path. When our hero overcomes his dark reflection, his victory serves as proof that our hero's choices were the correct ones. The dark reflection's defeat proves that his alternate choices were misguided or selfish or flawed in some other way. You see this villain archetype all over the place in stories. For example, half of every supervillain ever is a dark reflection of their superhero rival, and this is exactly the role Krauser serves in Resident Evil 4. Krauser shares many of the same abilities and experiences as Leon. They are very similar characters. They are both American Special Forces agents with traumatic past experiences confronting horrific biological weapons. However, whereas Leon's experiences with bioweapons led him to dedicate himself to defeating those weapons in order to save innocent lives, Krauser's experience with bioweapons led him to believe that all other forms of power were futile in the face of these bioweapons, that pursuing any other power would lead to suffering, defeat, and death, and so he became obsessed with possessing that power for himself. When Leon defeats Krauser, he is also proving that his choice to dedicate himself to battling biological weapons and defending innocence was not a naive choice, but the correct choice, the righteous choice, the winning choice. While Krauser's pursuit of power at the expense of all else is exposed as a weak-minded, hollow, and ultimately self-defeating goal. There are elements of this dark reflection in the original story, but I think they've been enhanced in this remake. In the remake, the writers have also added a master and apprentice type of relationship to their characters. In the original story, Krauser and Leon seemed to be equals, former brothers in arms who had fought side by side. In that version, Krauser always referred to Leon as comrade, which is something you say to an equal. In the remake, Krauser is Leon's former mentor. Krauser was Leon's instructor during his training to become a special agent. In this version, Krauser always refers to Leon as rookie, which is something you say to an inferior. This is a completely different kind of relationship, and I think it adds an interesting new dynamic to their confrontations. Leon isn't just confronting his own dark reflection now, but is also confronting his mentor, his teacher, someone he probably looked up to, maybe even a father figure. It adds a tragic element to their battle that was missing in the original version. On the one hand, this makes Krauser seem far more dangerous in battle. He knows everything Leon can do because he's the one who taught Leon how to do it and probably mastered it years before Leon ever learned it. He knows how to counter Leon's every move. He knows the counter to the counter of Leon's every move. He is a very different type of danger than the other villains in the story. The Priest and Salazar and Sadler don't know Leon. They don't know what he's capable of. They don't know his training, but Krauser does. 
Krauser knows Leon, and that makes him a frightening villain. On the other hand, in this new version, when Leon finally defeats Krauser, it becomes this coming-of-age moment for him. The moment when the apprentice finally surpasses the master, when he fulfills and grows beyond his mentor's training. It adds weight, gravitas, and drama to Krauser's death. I'm actually really impressed with most of the changes the writers have made to the story in this remake. I think every single change has made the story feel more cohesive more mature and more dramatic, and all of the characters have more compelling motivations now. What I want to do now is follow Krauser's story from its beginning to its end in Resident Evil 4, see how the writers introduce, develop, and ultimately end the story of Jack Krauser. But first, let's start with some backstory. I remember being very confused by Krauser's backstory the first time I ever played Resident Evil 4, because when Krauser first appears, Leon is like, Whoa, holy crap, it's Krauser, whoa! Remember when we went on that whole big adventure in South America together? That was crazy! And I was like, who the heck is this guy? I've never seen this guy before in my life. I was certain that I had missed an entire Resident Evil game somehow. Like, there must have been a Resident Evil 2.5 somewhere starring Leon and his best buddy Krauser hanging out in South America. Because Resident Evil 4 introduces Krauser as if you should already know him. But you don't. No one does. There is no other game. Krauser is a brand new character. Of course, nowadays, there actually is a game that tells that story. Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles released for the Nintendo Wii in 2000. 2009, and it at least partially takes place during Operation Javier, and stars Leon and Krauser. I think I'm going to try to track down a copy and review that game on this channel because I've never played it, but I am very interested in it now. Anyway, this is kind of a confusing way to introduce a new character. Midway through an established franchise, throw in a brand new character and be like, I've been here all along, we have lots of backstory together, I swear. Resident Evil 4 does do a good job of concisely explaining Leon and Krauser's shared backstory though, and any confusion on the player's part should only be temporary. As previously stated in this new version of Resident Evil 4's story, Krauser was Leon's mentor. Following the events of Resident Evil 2, Leon Kennedy was recruited by the American government, and that's where he met Krauser, an older agent. Krauser's training transformed Leon from a simple rookie cop into an elite covert agent. Everything Leon is capable of in Resident Evil 4, all of his fancy kicks and acrobatics, his knife work, his mastery of so many different kinds of weaponry, all of this is thanks to Krauser's training. It would not be an exaggeration to say that Krauser, as Leon's teacher, is at least partially responsible for everything Leon accomplishes here. And it's also thanks to Krauser's training that Leon is able to defeat Krauser himself, which is a classic case of literary irony. Following this training, Leon and Krauser were sent on something called Operation Javier, an American covert special forces operation in South America related to hunting down and destroying bioweapons. The exact convoluted and dramatic details of this operation are unimportant. All you need to know to understand Krauser's storyline in Resident Evil 4 is that things went terribly wrong there. The American soldiers were abandoned by their government for unclear reasons. Nearly the entire force was wiped out by biological weapons. The sole survivors were Krauser and his trainee, Leon. This is where Krauser and Leon's story diverges. Following this tragedy and failure, Krauser suffered a sort of existential crisis. In the face of that total destruction, his former life seemed futile and pointless to him. He abandoned the American government that had abandoned him. He was so impressed by the terrible power of the bioweapons that had destroyed his team, that he became convinced that the only way to survive in this harsh world was to possess that kind of power for himself. He went on a search for power that ultimately led him to the Illuminatus cult. In the original version of the story, Krauser was sent to the Illuminatus by Wesker, but I want to make very clear that this is not the case in the remake story, or at least not as it has been presented so far. In the remake story, Krauser's joining of the cult is not a part of some distant mastermind villain's manipulations, but is instead a culmination of his own character's personal journey, which I think is narratively much more interesting. A character who makes their own choices is always a more interesting character than one who is merely following someone else's orders. With the Illuminatus, Krauser discovered the kind of power he thought he needed to survive. He is not a covert agent infiltrating their group this time, but instead a full-fledged member of their cult, a worshipper of the Plagas. 
and he works just as hard as the rest to spread the parasite across the world. Alongside Sadler, he came up with a plan to kidnap the president's daughter and through her infect the American government. It was Krauser who personally led the operation that successfully kidnapped the president's daughter and transported her to rural Spain. Now, you might suspect that Krauser is doing this to get revenge on the American government, who he feels betrayed him. But later on, Krauser himself will claim otherwise, so we can discuss it in more detail then. And this is where the plot of Resident Evil 4 begins, when Krauser's old trainee and partner Leon Kennedy is sent to Spain to track her down. Unlike Krauser, Leon did not abandon the government that had abandoned him. Leon was not impressed by the destructive power of the bioweapons that destroyed their team during Operation Javier. Instead, Leon was horrified by them. He was further convinced that he needed to be stronger and smarter to face them and save innocent lives. Both he and Krauser recognized the need for strength, but whereas Krauser sought that strength through the shortcut of using biological weapons, Leon found that strength within himself through training and dedication. This is the core of their conflict, these two different methods of acquiring strength. And when Leon finally defeats Krauser, inner strength will have proven to be the superior strength. Krauser doesn't show up until over halfway through the game in one of Leon's visions of Sadler, and I think we should watch it together and see how the writers introduce this character, so here it is. Beautiful little lamb. Your suffering came in just as it has from his daughter. Who has joined us in communion, and now she is of our flesh, of our blood. My faithful disciple will show her the path. Go now. Deliver to these vagrant children their salvation. As you wish. So, I've spent all this time talking about how Krauser fits the archetype of the Dark Reflection, and then here, in his very first appearance in the game, you see him only through his reflection in this knife. This is Krauser's introduction to the story. This is the first time you'll ever see him. Before you learn anything about his character's backstory, motivations, or personality, the game has already shown the audience what his role in this story is going to be, through the photography of the scene here, that he is going to be the classic dark reflection of the hero. I really like how the composition of the scene here matches his role in the story. Let's move on to Krauser's second appearance in the game. Where did that hell? The fresh air is sculling our names. Por fin! Gus, if we made it all this way, you know it means we're almost... <coughs> almost what? <coughs> Luis! <coughs> Long time no see you. Major Krauser? What the hell? Why? Recovering stolen goods. And killing a few rats along the way. Easy work. Ashley. It was you. Oh, you catch him quick! Didn't I teach you? Knives are faster. <laughs> Not good. In an action video game story, something that's really important concerning the villains is that the story needs to get you to want to defeat the villain. The players themselves need to be motivated enough to keep fighting to reach this villain to stop them. One of the easiest ways to accomplish this is to have that villain kill a beloved character. And in this scene, completely out of nowhere, Krauser murders Luis. 
I was really impressed with Luis's storyline in the remake. He was a likable enough character in the original, but in this remake they fleshed him out in a lot of really smart ways. I was very surprised by how invested I became in his story and how upset I felt when he died. I'm definitely going to do a separate video going through Luis's storyline too because he deserves it. But this is an essay about Krauser, and this scene is Krauser's proper introduction to the story, and the audience should immediately hate him. He just killed a character we really like. We want to see this guy go down. The writers have done their jobs here. They've given the player a motivation to keep playing. In the original game, Sadler was the one who killed Luis, but in the remake, the writers have shifted this murder over to Krauser. I find this to be a really interesting decision. I think Krauser is the most compelling villain in this game, even more so than Sadler, and I think the writers recognize that too. That mix of dark reflection and mentor archetypes makes him really interesting. And so the writers gave him the most despicable act in the story, the murder of Luis. It makes the audience's relationship with Krauser much more personal, which mirrors the personal nature of Leon's relationship to him. Unlike Sadler, who is sort of a random villain who has no relationship to Leon, Krauser does have a relationship with Leon. And so letting Krauser be the one to murder Luis, Leon's new companion, instead of Sadler, adds far more emotional weight and drama to the scene. As for the rest of the scene, the writers do a good job of immediately establishing the backstory between Leon and Krauser. Krauser calls Leon rookie, something you'd say to an inferior while Leon calls Krauser by his title, Major Krauser, a term of respect. The language here establishes their mentor and apprentice relationship. Also, look at how little Krauser cares about the death of Luis. The way he says, I'm just recovering stolen goods, killing some rats. Like he doesn't even care that he just murdered our favorite character. Because of course he doesn't care. Luis's life and any other life simply don't matter to him at all. Next, the scene does an excellent job of showing how dangerous Krauser is with that inhumanly quick leap forward with the knife. Plus that line, didn't I teach you knives are faster, continues to establish their mentor and apprentice relationship. And then their goofy little knife slap fight establishes that Leon is not just an apprentice anymore. Look how equal their stances are in this scene, how they mirror each other. The scene shows through their body language that not only are they equals, but they are reflections of each other. I also really like that line from Krauser when he tells Leon, not bad. This is another important part of Krauser's character, and another reason why I think he's the most compelling villain in the game. Krauser is the only villain in the story who shows any respect whatsoever for Leon or his abilities. A lot of video game villains are incapable of showing respect for our heroes. No matter how many times you kick their butts, they'll keep on saying things like, You're nothing, you're just a worm, I'm gonna get you next time. It requires a certain level of self-awareness for a villain to acknowledge their adversary series strength. It requires a certain level of respect of recognizing your opponent's humanity. I always really like seeing it in a story because it makes me respect that villain more, and you really can't help but respect Krauser some in this game, if only for his combat prowess. I also absolutely love this shot where Krauser lands and then slowly rises. I mean, let's watch it again because he looks so menacing here. Isn't that shot just completely perfect? Krauser looks so freaking scary there, I love it. I'm gonna continue to gush over this part of the game and declare that I think this boss fight may be the best one in the game. All of Resident Evil 4's boss fights are really well done. It has a lot of really memorable and crazy over-the-top fights against horrifying monsters. But what I like about this first battle with Krauser is that, compared to those other fights, this one is smaller, it's quieter. It's more intimate, it feels like you're facing off against someone who can match all of Leon's skills. It feels like something totally different than every other confrontation in the game. I really like it, I think it's really well done. The writers also made a smart decision to work a lot of exposition into the fight itself. Instead of making players sit through a long exposition heavy cutscene where Krauser explains his backstory and motivation, we get it during the gameplay of the boss fight. Throughout this whole fight, Leon and Krauser are speaking, and we learn more about his motivation 
motivations here than in any cutscene. Krauser claims that he is not under the cult's control, but that he made the choice as a free man to join them, which Leon naively refuses to believe. At first, Leon can't understand why anyone, especially his own mentor, would willingly join the Illuminatos, but Krauser will explain it. There's this interesting moment where Leon asks why anyone would join that cult, and Krauser seems genuinely surprised by the question. He says, why? Don't you remember what happened? And I'll let Krauser say the rest himself. A soldier like you! Why would you work for these freaks? Have you forgotten what happened to you? Operation Javier? Have mercy! Only devastating power! To Krauser, pursuing the power of bioweapons, joining the Illuminatus cult, taking that power for himself is an obvious choice, after the tragedy and betrayal that destroyed his entire unit. He seems genuinely kind of confused why Leon doesn't see things the same way. Despite being reflections of each other, they are fundamentally different characters who see the world in very different ways. Something else that's interesting to me about Krauser's character is that he never once tries to recruit Leon to the Illuminatus side. Typically, as the former mentor turned to the dark side, this would be Krauser's role. He would have some line where he says, Join me, Padawan, and we'll rule the world together. But that never happens. I think there are two reasons for this. Firstly, Krauser knows that it would be a waste of time. He knows Leon too well to believe Leon would ever join the Illuminatos. Secondly, and much more importantly, Krauser doesn't care about that. Krauser only cares about defeating Leon in battle, in proving to himself through victory that his choices were superior. Remember, Leon and Krauser share nearly identical traumatic experiences with bioweapons, but they both made very different choices in response. It seems to me that Krauser feels a need to prove to the world, to Leon, and to himself that his own choices were the correct ones. The only way he can do that is by defeating Leon, his own dark reflection. If he can defeat Leon with the new power he has attained, then that power was worth it. But if Leon can still defeat him after all he's done, then it was all pointless. Let's move on to Krauser's next appearance in the story. I've been waiting for you, uh... Rookie? Oh, worried about the girl, is that it? That's just like you. You always had poor judgment. <laughs> but if you think I'm gonna let you out of here alive, you're even more naive than I thought. You can't save her. You can't save anyone. Give it up, Krauser. Being a lackey for these maniacs won't bring your men back. And what the hell for? Revenge on the government? You think they would want that? Revenge. You think I'm doing all this for revenge? Isn't that what this is all about? See, in that jungle, I had a revelation. The most important thing in this world is pure, unadulterated power. Those Illuminados have given me that. You know, you were always an asshole. <laughs> but at least you had some kind of code. Some honor. Look at you now. Enough reminiscing. Move out and draw fire, soldier! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the dialogue here is pretty schlocky and melodramatic. It's all a little goofy, but that's just Resident Evil style. The Resident Evil games have always had a cheesy B-action movie style, and that's very much on display in this scene, and I do enjoy it. Krauser's line, you can't save her, you can't save anyone, is confronting Leon with his insecurities. Leon's whole character arc in this game has to do with overcoming self-doubt. After his failures in Raccoon City and Operation Javier, Leon doubts himself worries about whether he can really save anyone at all. By drawing attention to this before their fight, the writers are making that fight about Leon's insecurities. Now, if Leon can defeat Krauser, narratively he will also have proven to himself 
that he can save Ashley, that his struggles and choices have been worthwhile. This scene is also where Krauser states that he doesn't care about revenge, and I do believe him. I think he really doesn't care about revenge, he only cares about power. This scene reminds me of the movie Die Hard. The audience spends that whole movie believing that the bad guys are terrorists fighting for some grand goal. But then at the end, it turns out that they're just a bunch of greedy bank robbers who only care about money. The lack of any grand goal, the lack of any purpose for their violence and murders beyond simple greed makes them seem all the more evil, and I feel the same way here. If Krauser were fighting for revenge against a government who had genuinely wronged him, there would be a kind of honor in that. That's a goal we could understand, maybe even support. But if his motivation is nothing but power, then there is no honor, no redemption for him. He is simply evil. That's a choice made by the writers. They didn't want an honorable villain. They didn't want to ask hard questions about whether what he's doing is justified. They wanted Krauser to be purely and totally evil. Because this isn't Shakespeare, it's an action game. And the story exists to drive the action, not the other way around, just like in Die Hard. Moving on, I really like the first part of this fight against Krauser, where you navigate this deadly obstacle course full of traps while Krauser is trying to either gun you down from a distance or sneak up behind you. Gameplay-wise, it's really fun, but story-wise, it's also really interesting. Leon's mentor and apprentice relationship with Krauser adds a new dynamic to this part of the game. As previously mentioned, Krauser trained Leon. Probably, that training involved navigating elaborate obstacle courses just like this one. Krauser is very literally reenacting Leon's training here, and re-establishing himself as Leon's superior at the same time, now with much deadlier stakes. All throughout this obstacle course, Krauser is criticizing Leon's performance exactly the way a stern teacher might with a student, saying things like, you're losing your cool, you're making mistakes, you need to do better than this. There's also this moment when Krauser literally says, you and I are two sides to the same coin, we've chosen different paths, which pretty directly makes clear his role as Leon's dark reflection. Even he is aware of what his role in the story is. When Leon overcomes this gauntlet, he is proving himself as an equal in the same way he once proved himself as a student. Let's watch the next cutscene. Are we done here, Krauser? I told you. Again. And again. soft to do what's necessary. That's the difference between you and me, Rookie. Here, Krauser displays the full extent of his new power, transforming into a monster. I want to point out a difference between Krauser's transformation into his monster form and the other villains in the game. The Priest, Salazar, and Sadler all have moments when they lose control of themselves, and they completely cast off their humanity, transforming into total monsters. Contrast that with Krauser here. Krauser maintains control of himself, his emotions, and his body. He only transforms as much as he needs to gain an edge in this battle. He is still noticeably human even after his transformation. It's a marked difference between himself and every other villain in the game. Next, let's watch Krauser's final scene in the game, after Leon finally defeats him.
In the context of the Resident Evil franchise, this is a fascinating scene, because I'm pretty sure, and please do correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm almost certain that this is the only villain in the entire series who gives up after being defeated. Every single other villain in every other game desperately fights until their last breath. They fight more and more desperately and ferociously the closer they are to being defeated. But not Krauser. When Krauser is defeated, when he realizes that he's been beaten by Leon, that he can't win anymore, he gives up, he accepts defeat. I find this really interesting. A big reason for this is that Leon and Krauser have a relationship that basically no other protagonist and villain have in the series. They are respectful of each other in a way no other protagonist and villain are. They are master and apprentice. Another reason is that, unlike most other confrontations in the series, this wasn't a fight for survival. I mean, it kind of was. But it was also a thematic confrontation, a character confrontation, a confrontation between two different worlds. World views. Leon and Krauser are dark reflections of each other, an idea given further focus when Leon gazes at his own reflection in the knife before killing Krauser. They have the same experiences, but made different choices in response. This isn't a fight to decide which worldview survives, it's a fight to decide which worldview, which choices were correct, personal power or the defense of innocent life. Krauser recognizes that his worldview has been proven inferior. There's no point in fighting anymore because their fight has already achieved its purpose. There's also more of that master and apprentice relationship here. This battle between teacher and student served as the classic archetypical final test. When Leon passes that test, Krauser can let himself die, knowing that he will live on in his teachings, live on through Leon's achievements as all good teachers do. For how schlocky and goofy and melodramatic Resident Evil 4 is, this is a really solid death scene. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I was impressed with the writing in this game. And Krauser is easily the best written villain in the story. The writers took a character that was little more than a stooge for a bigger and badder villain, and they gave him an independent role in the story, clear personal motivations, and a meaningful relationship with the protagonist. It's really good work. 